enlightenment your nature excerpt from enlightenment in the ultimate flowering enlightenment is your nature just as every seed is destined to be a flower seed has immense possibilities hidden in its womb so to as an individual you are embodiment of infinite possibilities nothing is needed to be enlightened so how can you know all that is needed to be enlightened all that is needed is the right all that is needed is the right soil and everything begins to happen on its own look at the seed it has the potentiality but that potentiality cannot be realized until the seed goes through a process the seed is an unconscious state and there is an unsatiable quest the seed is an unconscious state there is although an unsatiable quest to attain to its flowering but it cannot happen on its own in the same way man is embodiment of infinite possibilities but it requires the right environment first a conscious and satiable quest then the right environment where all that is superfluous is cut off is removed then what is natural begins to happen on its own nothing is needed to be enlightened enlightenment is your natural state it is not something that has to be manufactured or created it is already there if you are manufacturing something new then many things will be needed if you are not manufacturing anything new what is needed you are already enlightened but you are asleep so you are not aware of it how can anything be needed certainly nothing is needed so the idea that you know all that is needed to be enlightened is the only obstruction in your way so the idea that even you look at it any individual you start talking to him about anything of the inner immediately says yes yes i know it i know it all i know it all that is you ask talk to a hindu you start speaking about bhagavad gita i know yes yes yeah, i know it you talk to him about anything i know it all that is the phrase on the mind of everyone on the lips of everyone so the idea that you know all that is needed to be enlightened is the only obstruction in your way nothing is needed to be enlightened and nothing is needed to be known to be enlightened what it is needed to discard all that is not i have heard michael angelo an anecdote about him he used to spend his spare time by a shop at the back of the shop there was a big marble stone the man the owner of the shop found it to be a nuisance there an obstruction so one day he told michael that michael i know you like the huge stones but this stone is lying here uselessly and i have no use of it i would like to give it to you 
and I will also arrange to get it to your place. Michael was very happy and the stone was transported to Michael's place. Couple years passed, Michael started working on that stone. Then one day he came to the shopkeeper and told him that I want you to come with me. I want to show you something. When the person went and what he saw, it was a sculpture of Jesus. His body was taken out from the cross and it was lying on the lap of Mary. Tears began to flow from the eyes of the shopkeeper. He had not seen such a beautiful sculpture. He asked Michael, how did you do this? Michael said, I did not do anything. The sculpture was hidden in the stone. When I used to watch this stone lying dormant behind your shop, I used to see this, but there was no possibility. When you gave me this stone, marble stone, I was very happy. I had seen this sculpture long ago hidden, embedded in this stone. All I did, I removed all that was hiding this stone, the hiding this sculpture to manifest. I removed all that was unwanted piece of marble, gave it, polished it and gave it a proper shape and now all you see is the sculpture in front of you that is captivating your heart. Man is a big marble stone where all the possibilities are embedded into him. It is the sculpture whose chisel and hammer is needed to remove all that is unwanted. The stone is ready to be transformed into a sculpture, but man being conscious is not ready and the moment you start chiseling out all that is unwanted, there is a resistance. Because nobody wants to leave all that is known, you start, if you are conditioned in a particular faith, what is needed, that has to be hammered out of you. Immediately resistance begins to come. If somebody is, is deeply engrossed or conditioned in politics, you start hammering, chiseling out all those conditionings, the, per the person stops talking to you. He feels that you are destroying his or her faith system, belief system. This is why it becomes difficult for a human being to attain to enlightenment and it is far easier for a sculpture to manifest in a stone, a painting to manifest on the canvas because the canvas is ready. It does not resist from doing anything. There was a Zen master. He was unique in his ways. He has created some beautiful pieces of furnitures. And whenever anybody asks how does he create, he said, I go to the forest and talk to the trees. And then whichever tree is ready to be converted into the chair or a furniture, I will start working on it. So this tree helps me to create the chair out of it. Once it happened, the king asked, heard about his fame and asked him to create 
a particular piece of furniture. The king asked, how long will it take? The master said, I have to go to the forest and see if any tree is ready to be converted into this furniture. If the tree is ready, then it will not take long. But if the tree is not ready, I have to wait. Couple months passed, the king inquired. The master said, I went to the forest. None of the trees agreed to be converted into the furniture. One of the trees said that I will be ready in three months time. So you have to wait. Until the tree is ready, I cannot convert it into the furniture and it will not be beautiful. So too the master has to wait for the innerness of an individual. When he is on the borderline, ready to wake up from his deep sleep, then he initiates into the system. Initiation means the disciple is willing and gives the master the right to start working on him, chisel out all that is unwanted so that the real essence begins to manifest. People come to the master but they are not ready. Master has to wait and do all that is necessary to create the willingness in the seeker. Then the process of initiation begins. Remember nothing is needed to be enlightened and nothing is needed to be known to be enlightened. Enlightenment is already there. It is not a realization, instead it is a recognition. You have to recognize that you are already enlightened. The stone recognizes unconsciously that it has the sculpture hidden in it. It is not that you have to make effort to bring it. All that you need is not to make any effort. Drop all efforts all that is unwanted and suddenly it is there. The dawn has come. You cannot see it because you are continuously making efforts to see it. Your very effort to see it is functioning as a barrier. You cannot say all those time, am I enlightened? You are enlightened indeed all the time. Not when you hear me, not when you read something from the Diamond Sutra, not only in those moments. Sometimes it happens when a master is talking about enlightenment, satori and things like these. The listeners begin to feel, yes, I am enlightened. From the very beginning to the end, you remain enlightened. You can go on deceiving yourself that you are not enlightened as long as you want. But all the same, you are enlightened. You are enlightened. This is a recognition. It is like a woman who is pretending to be a woman in a drama, in a stage act. He is all the time man, he goes on pretending, sometimes even he may forget. But he is a good actor, a really good actor, he may get into the idea and forget about it. For a few moments he may think that he is a woman, but again and again he will know that he is a man deep within. It is a miracle that you forget that you are enlightened, that you go on forgetting it, but you are enlightened indeed. Remember enlightenment is not a quality that is going to happen to you in some future. 
it is your intrinsic value intrinsic quality you have brought it with you from the very beginning it is in your breathing it is in your heartbeat it is the stuff that you are made of if you think that sometimes you are enlightened and sometimes not then you are not enlightened once enlightenment is recognized it remains like if you think that sometimes you are enlightened and other times not then you are not enlightened the day you know you are always enlightened then you are enlightened once you have felt enlightenment it is always there surrounding you like an aroma like an aura still you can go on playing a thousand and one games i am playing a game buddha is playing but that does not make any difference then it is with full awareness that the game is played it does not entangle or imprison once you play a game knowing that it is a game then there is no problem the father plays the game with the child and makes him win knowingly the father accepts his defeat and makes the child win there is no problem then you can be in the world and then you can be whatsoever you enjoy to be but deep down you know that you are not that deep down you remain far away you become a lotus flower that grows in the water yet water touches it not in order to bring about the transformation master plays many games all these talks all these methodologies whether teaching the cooking or anything whether having weekly meditation sessions talks all these are conscious game for the master so that in one of these rare moments you recognize your essential nature that i am that superfluous knowing can never become beingness there is so much of unwanted superfluous knowing everyone feels that he knows and in reality he knows nothing there is no aroma of knowingness in an individual even deep and profound knowing can never become beingness knowledge itself is an obstruction knowing can never become being superficial or profound never make such distinctions these are the tricks of the mind again and again it is the knowledgeable mind that creates the problems you will have to be aware mind is very cunning it can accept many things and again bring them back from the back door it goes on bringing 
Suddenly I started talking on something on enlightened. Yes, I know. I know all about it. I have read it long time. Mind says that. By reading, by reading a recipe, does it mean that you know how to cook that dish? This is the first step. Then you have to make effort, go into the fineness of it. And then one day you will be able to master that dish to its perfection. You will have to be aware, mind is very cunning. It can accept many things and again bring them back from the back door. It can say, right, I perfectly agree with you. How can superfluous knowledge give you enlightenment? That is not possible. I will show you the way how to get the profound knowledge. What will you do to get the profound knowledge? It will be superfluous knowledge again because knowledge is superficial. At the most you will have more superficial knowledge. The quantity will grow and through the quantity you will have the illusion that you are becoming profound, you know much. The wisest person is one who knows nothing. He knows that he know nothing at all. You may go into deeper details, but details never lead you to the depth. You can know one thing, about one thing or thousand things about that one thing. Nothing makes difference. Knowledge is about and about. You are on the periphery. It never hits the point. It never reaches the target. The target is reached only by being and to be Knowledge has to be dropped absolutely, totally with no conditions, with no choice that it is good, keep it, and that is bad, drop it. This is profound, keep it, and that is not profound, so drop it. If you keep anything of knowledge, you will remain unenlightened. Someone asks a Zen master what you used to do before enlightenment. He said, I used to chop wood and carry the water up the hill. What do you do now after you are enlightened? inquired someone. I do the same thing. I chop wood and carry the water up the hill. And what is the difference? Differences of awareness. The moment awareness changes, the quality of life changes. All that you need to do is, is change your level of awareness, change your understanding. The moment that changes, nothing else is needed. If you keep anything of knowledge, you will remain unenlightened. And the wonder of wonders is that you are enlightened and you go on remaining unenlightened. This is the greatest miracle. That you are enlightened and you go on remaining unenlightened. What else can be a greater miracle than this? They say that science is an effort to know more and more about less and less. I have heard a patient was waiting by the doctor's office. He had the earache, pain in his ears. He waited for his turn to come in. After nearly an hour or so, his turn came. He went inside. The doctor asked, what is your complaint? The patient said, I have a severe earache. Doctor said, let me examine. When he was going to examine, 
He said, which side of the ears do you have the earache? He said, left side. The doctor said, I am sorry, I am specialized in the right side of the ears. I cannot treat you. All that time is wasted. The science say that it is an effort to know more and more about less and less. He knows too much about the Eric but only on the right side. So he has excluded the entire body. If you go on and on with this approach, you know more and more about less and less. And what will be the end then? The end will be you know all about nothing. That will be the logical conclusion. I would like to say that religion is just the opposite approach. Religion is just the opposite approach. Science is the approach to know more and more about less and less. Religion is the approach to know less and less about more and more. And what will be the ultimate result? One day you go on knowing less and less about more and more. One day you know nothing about all and that is the experience to know nothing about all. This is what I call ignorance but this is a glowing ignorance. This is the beginning of enlightenment. You have nothing to do you are already enlightened. You have to remove all that is unwanted. Your conditionings, your belief systems, your knowings. When you come in front of the master, the moment master starts saying anything, yes, I know. Then why have you come to me? I have been meditating for so long. But I want to know more about it. What do you want to know more about it? I know nothing. If you already have been meditating for so long, then there is no need for you to come to a master. Just continue doing what you are doing. If you have come to a master, listen to him. There is no need to say anything. Because all your knowing have been futile and it has not helped in blossoming of your being. And that is the process. That is the process of communing with the Master. You come to the company of the Master.